people think that we are bringing a sacrifice for sin before Yom Kippur, but that is not true at all. It is completely bogus. All right, let's talk turkey, or chicken rather. As you might know, Yom Kippur is approaching, and before Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, the Jewish people have an ancient custom where a chicken is taken, it's circled over our heads, and then it is sent off to be slaughtered. Now you're probably wondering what is this all about, so let's discuss this. The first thing you need to know is that this is not a sacrifice, and we specifically use a chicken so that you understand that it is not a sacrifice. You see, inside of the Bible, there are only five animals that are allowed to be brought as a sacrifice. That would be oxen, sheep, goats, pigeons, and turtle doves. So when we use a chicken for this ritual, we want you to understand very clearly that this is not sacrificial in nature. Moreover, you need to understand that when the temple is not standing, the Jewish people are not allowed to bring sacrifices. And we are currently living in a period of time that Hosea prophesied long, long, long ago. He said it would be many days without sacrifices. Until the Messiah comes and builds a third temple, the sacrificial system is on hold. But when the Messiah comes, the sacrificial system will be reinstituted. And the Messiah himself is actually going to bring a bull as a sin offering, as we see in Ezekiel chapter 45, verse 22. Now, while we're on the topic of sin sacrifice, I just want to mention that there was no all-encompassing sacrifice for sin. In fact, the Korban Chatas, the sin sacrifice, was only for unintentional sins. If a person was careless, if they were negligent, if they weren't thoughtful and they transgressed something, then that person would be required to travel to Jerusalem, go into the Holy Temple, part with a sum of money, purchase the things needed for the sacrifice, go to the priest, repent, confess, turn from his ways, resolve not to do it again, and engage in this ritual. And the point of it was that it was a teaching tool. It taught him to be more careful in the future because when you're trying to turn from a bad behavior, when you have a bad habit, when you're not careful about something, making a resolve doesn't go so far. But doing a physical action leaves a much bigger imprint on the person, especially when it involves taking money from your own pocket and spending it on something. So those are just some of the misconceptions about the sacrificial system. And of course, those misconceptions get applied to the Kaparis ritual. People think that we are bringing a sacrifice for sin before Yom Kippur, but that is not true at all. It is completely bogus. So now that you know what it is not, let's go ahead and talk about what it is about. Kaparis is about charity. In Proverbs chapter 10, verse 2, it tells us that charity will save from death. And in fact, we find that Daniel actually gave Nebuchadnezzar the advice to give charity in order to avert an evil decree. With charity, you will remove your sin and your iniquity by showing mercy to the poor. You see, during this time of year between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, God is examining us. He saw where we came from, where we want to go, the efforts we're investing in order to become close to Him, to be better people, to change our ways. And He's judging us during this time. He's sealing the decree for the coming year. So during this time, we are showing God that we are actively involved in change. And we increase in three things during this time. Repentance, prayer, and charity. And when God sees us doing charity, that we're caring for other people, they're being kind, we're taking care of them, we're making sure that they have everything that they need, God is going to mirror that back to us. He's going to reflect it back to us. And He's going to give us a good year. So we increase in charity at this time of year. And one of the best ways to do this is to provide food for people. So the Jewish people have this ritual before Yom Kippur to take a chicken and to slaughter it and to give it to a poor family so that they can go and immediately prepare food for themselves. Now, some communities actually have the custom to use fish instead of chicken, and that's perfectly acceptable. And other communities actually use money instead of chicken or fish, and that is perfectly fine as well, even though it removes the active preparing a food for other people by one step, but it's not a bad thing at all. And if you're asking me personally, I prefer to use money because I find that the smell of chickens is an assault on the olfactory senses. And I also don't like the way that the commercial industry treats chickens. I think we have a lot of improvement to do in this area, so I prefer to use money. But whichever method you prefer, the important thing is that you should be increasing acts of charity at this point in time. So do go ahead and do that. Find ways to take care of other people. And in doing so, may you be blessed with a good, wonderful year ahead.